Nathaniel Hackett has chosen to give up the offensive play calling. He addressed uh, yesterday what it was like to go through a game without being the one to call the offensive plays. Here's what he had to say. I, I really liked it. I, I thought it was fun to be part of a little bit more integral with the defense uh, right there for each year if we needed timeouts, penalties, all that stuff, and special teams offense, just being around the guys more, um, trying to get the crowd pumped up. They were amazing last night. I mean, they, they brought a lot of juice. I thought that was critical. And uh, so it, it was it was different, uh, something I'll have to get used to and get used to not touching the button. But uh, I thought it was really good. I, I think right now as we evaluate, you know, going into the game plan together, I think there, there's still going to be a lot of areas that I'll work in. In, and uh, and I'll continually help develop that and be in the quarterback room, continually helping with that, but not having to be in there full time. Same thing with the group. Um, so it allowed me to kind of bounce around, do some other things when I was uh, I was missing some things, whether it be meetings or other things come up. Um, so I think it'll free me up a little bit, and also at the same time, I'll still be there to help those guys as much as possible. When we were in the Tennessee game, I just I I didn't feel right. So I think that's why uh, I really kind of put my foot down and decided to to kind of move it over to Clint and. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what Clinton Justin can put together. Look, I, I know that it's been characterized as it was his decision. I, I just wonder how much of it is the balloon baskets being weighed down. I better throw something overboard if yeah. I want this thing to fly. Right. And, and, and if, you know, we, we've seen it with Jerry Rossberg being brought in to help with game management. And it's, it's just one thing after another. And as we see Mike McDaniel doing really well in Miami, Brian Dayball doing well with the Giants, Kevin O'Connell doing well with the Vikings, it just, it's just not a good look to have this many adjustments that you're making on the fly and you keep losing. That's the other side of it too, Chris. They made this change and they still lost the game. No, I, I know. It, it doesn't look great. It doesn't. You know, but, but the, 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 the still all these changes and – this is where I defend Nathaniel Hackett a little bit, are all being done because of one reason once again. Oh, well, I, we all got to change his perception because of Russell Wilson. I mean, that's what it is. I, that's where, again, I'll, I defend him a little bit because of that, where, I, hey, I'll give up play calling duties. Well, why? I mean, you've been calling plays, and I watch the film, and I've done some things on social media that you know about, we talk about, where I go, people are open. You know, every game that everybody does of Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos, the announcers point out people are open, you know, but, oh, I got to give up the play calling duties because of just the perception of the situation. You know, that's what's happened here. It's the politics, the guy that they are paying the most, that they have put all the assets into and made the biggest move has been the biggest failure for their football team. And you don't. You can talk to anybody in football and the rumors that are coming out of there from the players in the locker room and everything, everything points to that. Let alone, we went through a game here last weekend again where the mi biggest mistake of the football game, other than maybe Melvin Gordon's fumble right there, was by the $45 million quarterback who threw an incompletion with a minute and 40 seconds left and didn't take a sack, had an open receiver for a first down and didn't want to throw it to him. I mean, things where you go, you know, I'd love to blame the coach, but you've played enough football here. There's, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. And then to make that change the whole dynamics of the end of the football game to where you gave the Raiders a chance to go down and beat you, let alone if you take the sack, you're going to make it dicey to whether the field goal can even happen and they can get in position to tie the game. So, Again, it's the blunders, and I don't want to jump on one guy here, but it, it, it's, the, it's the, the horse in the room as far as the Broncos are concerned is that the quarterback is not playing good let's at not all. Ride. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's not, not ride. ride. Right. Um, well, th there's more we could say, but we need to take a break. A bottom line is they traded for him. I they know. either got conned or they didn't do their due diligence. They paid him when they had seen some presumably – enough in training camp that they should have wondered, do we, do, maybe we should wait a year on this. And, you know, there are still people who think that when Nathaniel Hackett became the coach, it was all part of a plan to get Aaron Rodgers there as the quarterback, not Russell Wilson. And you wonder, I, I still think that, that Aaron Rodgers basically was the guy who said, I'm going to go skydiving. I'm going to go skydiving. I'm going to go skydiving. And it was time to jump out of the plane. He decided not to do it. <laughs> I, and, uh, you know, may, maybe Hackett didn't think he was going to get Russell Wilson. Maybe he thought he was going to have Aaron Rodgers. Not that 
Rodgers' play this year would have been any better based upon what we've seen in Green Bay. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.